I cannot figure out how to log out of this account. I'm stuck here. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I might be, uh, I'll be listening, but I might be in and out just because uh, spilled something on my keyboard and so I have to, I, I just uh, fixed it all, but I think I need to now put in all the screws again. And so I might be uh, a little preoccupied there. We see a lot of um, repeated keys. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I can't. I can't stay the the whole time. Um, so maybe um, I can help facilitate the first the first um, probably fifteen twenty minutes. Hey, we are. Hey, Shripa. Hey. I can also give a little bit of an update on. Um, the uh, example stuff uh, as well. Let's, uh, I guess, give it another minute or two for if you are the folks to join. Uh, yeah, I guess we have a, a quorum. All right. So um, agenda building. Um, so currently based on chit chat in the past five minutes, uh, I think we have the usual check-in on status on the reference architecture. Uh, Michael is gonna give an update on um, the, the demo um, slash implementation that you showed last time. Um, I have added also an item about uh, brainstorming a little bit about um, what our plans are also because we, we have keep on coming around. We wanna get some feedback and get some participation from the broader community. Um, you know, so what we can put out there to um, see whether we have any gaps that we have to fill or you know, some future plans. And anything else that we want to add to the agenda? Any folks with updates? All right. Awesome. So yeah, I'll, I'll start facilitating. I have to drop off in about 15 minutes. <laughs> if someone can continue on, that'd be awesome. Um, so let's do on a brainstorm on on you know what we are going to to tell folks at KubeCon. Kind of just um so the, the whole point of this is so the chairs were going through the different issues and we're trying to prepare the issues. Um, because we're going, you know, this is one of the projects that uh we are kind of highlighting in the, the sessions at KubeCon, and we want to make sure that. Uh, when folks um, that see this at KubeCon want to come and contribute, that they have kind of a good base 
um, to contribute, they know kind of what is wanted uh, at this point of time in this project, what kind of expertise is required and so on and so forth, how to contribute. Um, so I think the main things, uh, content, content points that we wanna get to put in this issue is, you know, uh, one, what, is, um, what do we need contributions for? Um, the second thing is, are there any gaps that uh, we need specific skill sets that we need contributions for? And I think the third and final thing is to kind of um, add a few teasers about future work that, you know, once uh, we have uh, the initial draft, you know, we, we talked about in the past about exploring other areas. Um, there's the whole like going to implementation and things like that. So I think, you know, that's kind of like a broad, here are some other things that the working group would be uh, working on. And so please join if you're interested in you know, participating in the conversation. Um, yeah, so I wanted to open up to the comments about you know, things that we need um, probably contributions for, maybe we need certain folks with particular expertise, some ideas to work on in the future, you know, I think let's do this free form and hopefully at the end of this, uh, we can kind of collect these things and summarize it in the issue. Yeah, um, I, I definitely think um, uh, everything you said there uh, makes sense to me. And, and I think uh, one of the things, um, is from my perspective, um, and it's sort of a, a broader sort of thing, um, is, is it would be, I think, nice to get um, some differing, like, uh, up, what, uh, let me take a step back. So, so we have talked about what sorts of um, the general high level concepts. We've talked about also potential implementations or, you know, like, hey, if we use this tool, this is perhaps how you would do it. But I think it is worthwhile to um, uh, build some additional sort of consensus around some of that, um, especially around the differing tools. Like as an example, uh, yesterday, uh, was it Steve Lasker, I believe his name was, um, you know, showed off how, how some notary and Oris stuff all works together. And it largely seems sort of in line with how a lot of folks are, are approaching the problem, including, for example, the SIG store folks and, and, and the, you know, um, other folks with, uh, that are using sort of the more Google sort of stack um, and so on. But I think it would probably be uh, useful for us to maybe get some additional, um, we, you know, obviously we want to be as generic as possible, but we also want to make sure that, you know, if all the tool vendors are all, you know, are not vendors, but if all the tool projects are going in different directions, um, we do want to make sure like we have a better understanding of what that means for us. Okay, that sounds good. So I, it sounds like this is, um, we want to be able to solicit participation from other projects that are orthogonal as well as um, I think the other part of this is to make sure that we are kind of going the same direction, right? Or at least making the same assumptions. Uh, yeah, uh, I, that's one part. Um, a second part, and I know we have some folks on the call who are um, involved in some of the OCI stuff directly, but it, it would be, I think, um, so, so the stuff that I'm at least uh, concerned about is just in anything we're doing, is it going to be, um, uh, I guess, with all the plan changes that have been happening to OCI, the stuff that has just recently been sort of accepted and, you know, yes, the tooling hasn't adopted all of it yet, but are we doing anything that, that precludes us from, you know, that stops us from eventually adopting any of those things? I don't think that we are, if, if that's a concern you have, uh, or is the concern uh, advert like, or, or making it clear to potential 
users, contributors, interested parties that this is in line with OCI's path? Yeah, so actually part of it is literally from my ignorance as well, is I don't, I honestly, like, you know, I, I'm seeing a lot of these things and from my naive looking at it, I don't think we're doing anything, but I would love to, yeah, yeah. to hear more from other folks just to make sure Hey, like if 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 there is something in the document that somebody goes and says, oh, that's really out of line with what you know they're going to be implement, you know what the something's coming in in OCI or something that you know just going to throw something out there like, oh, uh, you know, the, did you see the NTIA draft for S bombs or whatever? It's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, we didn't realize that. Like, you know, we sh should we be involved in those conversations and so on. So that 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 was just it. It's just like. Yeah, you know, we should just make sure that it's very clear. I think yeah, I agree with Michael. I think that's a valid concern. We, we probably once we have the draft in good shape, we should do the review and uh, make sure it is in line with uh, what the other projects that are happening. Right. Uh, there was other thing that uh, I wanted to basically just bring in. So there was uh, CSA released this serverless uh, security article or white paper recently. I was reading it. And one thing I found missing in our white paper is the discussion around how whatever controls or whatever recommendations we are making, how where they are going to help them, right? Are they going to help them protect against what scenarios? In that uh, serverless, I found that they had clearly mentioned if you do this, this will allow you prevent attacks like this or some compromises like this. So uh, maybe if we should have that discussion because I don't think we have any discussion around security attacks or what are what possibilities are there if you don't do this so anyone has any thoughts yeah yeah uh agreed and i think um one of the things that we were looking at um was you know for example salsa just because it's one of the few actual sort of specs around it um a bunch of the folks on this call are definitely involved in, in that as well including myself um I do think that we should, because uh, even as that's, uh, I think it's V0.1, not you know very, very much early on, uh, like they're considering it very alpha right now with, with stuff going to be changing. I, I totally agree though, because I think the thing here that we want to, there's like two things we want to make sure of is one is we want to give folks the holistic picture, right? We want to say, hey, look, you know, if you just use, um, you know, as an example, if you just use, uh, in Toto, but you're not validating what in Toto, right, is is actually running. Well, you're not actually getting a whole lot, and vice versa, right? If you're if you're validating what the individual steps are doing, but you're not validating that the output of one step is what the next step used, then you're also you know not getting a lot of value there. And so we want to make sure that there's like inevitably some baseline we need to kind of set and say, hey. Assuming you hit this baseline, here's the things that you know you're going to get, and then above that baseline, if you are doing these things, here are those extra. Here's that. Uh, here are the extra sorts of. Uh, here's the sets of attacks that we believe are mitigating against. You know, I don't know how we. And I. And to be clear, I'm not like a threat modeler or anything like that, but I do think it's worthwhile to talk about. You know, what level of sophisticated threat actor and so on that that we're talking about here, right? Like. I don't think there's anything we're saying that's going to prevent a, a a sophisticated state actor who has already compromised the Linux kernel from you know um, uh, from owning you. Uh, but um, uh, I do think we can say, hey, this would you know prevent these sorts of attacks, assuming you know it hasn't gone up this chain. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, I think I have three broad points so far. Um, inclusion of other other things like OCI, although this doesn't seem to be as much um, concern here. Um, the stuff on serverless, I kind of thought about it as use case specific impl implications. So maybe use case um, use case analysis for use of the reference architecture. Uh, and the last one was threat modeling and, you know, what are the considerations for reference architecture? Uh, what does the use of the reference architecture mean or what does it get you? You know, is that multi-stage approach to running things out and things like that. Um, before we add anything else, um, on the first point of bringing in other technologies that uh, we 
we want to make sure we have alignment with or we want to make sure that they uh, do have uh, a voice or influence in the reference architecture. Are there any other projects that we may be aware of that we should try and engage? So from my perspective, I think that there is, um, and, I, and actually I, this is up for debate is, does anyone think we are saying anything or making any sort of opinion based on SBOM that we think that we need to bring in folks either from the SPDX or Cyclone DX or SWID or anything else? Or do you think that our stuff is, is generic enough that it, you know, we could easily adopt any of that and, and it wouldn't uh, stop us from doing anything else? I think in general, it's it's pretty well written to be vague about specific implementations. I think not just for SPDX or whatever the SPOM format is, but also like uh, it doesn't actually mention OCI. It doesn't actually mention you know registries when it's not an important thing. It doesn't actually mention any specific implementation of how you, how or where your signatures are written. Um, so I think all of that is very good for making a reference architecture that does not make specific implementation guidance about these things. Um, well done. I think it's I think it's a good a good way to write this so that it's um, as non-controversial as possible. Yep. Uh, that makes sense. Actually, one thing that I just realized as a quick aside here, um, given that the sort of demo I had given last week and, and the way that both the, the notary and ORIS folks and the SIG store folks and a lot of the other folks um, are taking a lot of things, the, the way that a lot of folks are starting to push a lot of the supply chain stuff is in stuff like including these metadata and attestations alongside uh, the repo, the actual image repo. Um, so like stuff like, you know, as other tags or whatever inside of the actual, um, to live inside of the actual OCI registry. Um, do we, do we feel comfortable also stating that as a, um, as an opinion, like saying, Hey, look, right now we're focused on the cloud native stuff. And because we're focused on a lot of the cloud native stuff, we're saying, yes, store your S bomb alongside your image, store your, you know, inside the, the registry, rather than saying, hey, it should be stored inside of some other metadata store, some other database or whatever. Um, I just asking, cause like, I found it to be very, very easy to do it, the storing it in the other way. And I just, you know, but I also recognize that that's a very big decision. Yeah, so I'm uh, jumping right on this in. one. I think think it makes a lot of sense to put it inside the registry, and I think that's where a lot of the community is going to is to put this all in the registry. The question I wanted to throw out there was chatting with some of the Antoto folks this past week. Of does it make sense to send attestations out to end clients? Does it make sense to only send them this final signatures? How do we eliminate kind of a single point of compromise in in the latter risk? So I, I think there might be some open questions in that space. Who would be the consumers of that? Would that be policy, runtime? Just just trying to think of true. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things. Um, uh, you know, if we, if we go all the way to the right, it is policy as like emission control, right? Yeah. And so that's how, how we're using it in the demo and the examples is literally showing like, hey, I have an attestation. Um, and then also the thing that we found to be very useful was, and to be clear, I like, I, I don't want, you know, this is just my opinion about it. So if other folks have other opinions, like I don't want it to come off as, as a, a unilateral decision, but the thing that I am, um, I am sort of curious about is, yeah, like the thing that we've done is is it's being managed at policy time. And then in addition to that, the attestations largely refer to data, refer to metadata that's also stored as other objects in the repo itself. So as an example, like the OCI might be something like, yes, you have, um, uh, you know, yes, uh, the attestation that I have an SBOM, right? And, and some, some additional stuff there that the SBOM has been scanned for no vulnerabilities, right? That's an attestation. The material that proves that attestation is also stored as an object in um, the registry. Uh, 
And so th that's all the way to the right. And then the other things that we've been exploring um, is exploring stuff like we would also like to do stuff like if you don't have the right attestations, assuming you're in CICD, you wouldn't get pushed to the registry. Yeah. And so for, for me, the place that the questions come in play is if you're building all these attestations of, okay, I ran all these steps to the end users that are receiving these secure artifacts, do they care about that level of granularity or do they just want to know, hey, this is a sign thing that came from the approved vendor and that was all they cared about. And so I'm, I'm kind of focusing on where's the right level of, you know, what kind of attestation security signature or whatever we're going to give these artifacts, we ship them out to the end users for their use case. And with that in mind, um, things like if we do attestations, a lot of times we're building them with things like Spire, which are very short-term signatures, and then they expire after you know 30 minutes, something like that. The person that verifies that later on down the road, well, that's now an expired signature that is only accessible within the Spire environment. You can't even get in there to get some of this detail. So I'm trying to sort out where it makes the most sense to get the value out of here at the end users want. Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, so I think this is good discussions um, since this this meeting is kind of, I don't want to derail this meeting. I know we really want to talk about progress on white paper and kind of working on that. Um, so I put in the um, the the meeting doc notes. Um, you know, this would be a good time for anyone if there's like anything that you want to, you know, you're passionate about, you want to kind of see in the future, in the work, put it all there. Um, you know, Michael, um, Michael and I will be going through this to kind of synthesize that, kind of put it into issue format um, with Andrews, and then we will share with the group again to kind of get, get another I would worry back. that if we do that right now at this point, we would scope creep the whole thing rather from yeah. what we agreed last time that would make it end. Right. We can, yeah. we can debate that in a minute. I have seen Matt Moore try to go off mute a few times, so... Yeah. I don't know if you still have the train of thought of what you wanted to say, but. I, so I was just going to chime in on this sort of storage medium thing. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know that it makes sense to be prescriptive in the doc about that folks store it in the same medium. I think um, I think that, you know, it, it makes sense and will probably manifest that way, mostly because, you know, in terms of like what storage mediums are available and accessible to policy systems. Uh, and, you know, if you're talking about policy on containers, well, you have a container registry available because you're consuming containers. So it's sort of a lowest common denominator thing that's available that can serve, you know, blobs of information. So um, it's very convenient, but like, and I suspect because of that convenience, a lot of folks will use it, but like, it's by no means the only right answer. And so I, I don't know that it makes sense to be prescriptive about it. And, you know, it, to be fair, a lot of folks, uh, well, a lot, there are folks out there, there exist folks who are using container registries to store the container metadata, but are using a separate repo for the signatures versus the artifacts themselves, specifically to um, sort of uh, separate access control around those two things. So even if you were using the same sort of medium, you might be um, using sort of separate partitions of that medium. Uh, and so uh, there's, I think, many, many, many ways to hold it and I think uh, you know, by no means have we seen the end of it, but um, I think that it will often make sense to piggyback on the same or similar medium to the one you were signing when you can get away with that. So let me try to say back to you what I think I heard. We want to write down that we're deliberately not being prescriptive about storage mediums and try to convey the rationale as to why and include that call out of well there's there's people that are storing things in the same type of artifact but they're partitioning those and isolating uh the artifact from the metadata they they some some folks do that i i don't know that we even need to sort of advocate one way or the other there but um there there are reasons you may want to sort of partition access control across those two things but yeah. you know another instance where you know something like oci might not be involved is something like um, storing source right 
Um, how do you deal with storing sort of signatures and attestations when you know you're talking about stuff in terms of you know, a Git repo. Signed commits are nice, but they can't store the full breadth of things that we might want to uh, sort of uh, claim about a particular source commit and things like that. So, um, so it, it, just to sort of counterbalance a focus on things like OCI, right? Um, I think there it may make sense to try and find things to piggyback on in in terms of the Git medium um, as well, because it's convenient. It's there, but. You know, if someone wanted to use another storage system like, say, you know, Graphias or something like that, that, you know, has a way of referencing things um, in your medium, right? That's another way of doing it. It's perfectly valid if you can sort of, um, you know, do all of the things that are sort of described at a high level in the doc, you know, to Jason's point, right? I think the doc's done a really good uh, job of staying very abstract, and I think that's fine. Um, but like when we're pointing to examples, it's going to be really easy to find examples where folks are doing what we what we've been talking. About. Right. Yeah. So general yeah. considerations for metadata stores, right? Like you keep it high level and call out why you might want to use it one way or the other, perhaps. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Be, before we before we continue, I just wanna wanna keep um, let folks keep in mind that. We were having this discussion kind of just as an opportunity to kind of answer some of the questions that we may have that, um, you know, because of KubeCon coming up where we have a huge, uh, we will have some publicity on the work, we can get some answers, uh, questions answered. Again, you know, we, we've kind of talked a lot about some technical detail. I want to make sure we're not this like interest that we're not distracting away from yeah from no this work. is this is a super tactical one because we're going to open this up for comment and there's yep. five well-known people that are going to come in and like gonna poke holes and say oh you yep. didn't put ors <laughs> artifacts on this thing you didn't put oci on this thing so, so i i have to, to mitigate that risk i have to run uh andrews i didn't see you on the call earlier so so i think i will <laughs> I will hand, hand the facilitation to you. While you're still here, uh, I know you opened up a ticket with the CNCF service desk for illustrations. Did they ever acknowledge that? Or should I try to jump back in and, and do that, do those myself? Or find no, so, so I think I was waiting on, uh, so we had two illustrations, right? Uh, we had one, which was the high level six things, um, the three rows. And then we had one on the reference architecture. Um, I think I was waiting for the reference architecture one to be kind of fleshed out a little bit more um, because you know it's it's difficult for them to for us to engage them and then try and engage the same team again to kind of edit the work. So if we can get uh, more, of, I know there were a lot of comments on that particular reference architecture diagram. If we can kind of flesh it out a little bit more, I can ping them again on it. But are they are they on the hook to do it? And like, will they respond in time? We're talking no. about like two weeks, or like no. by next week. No, no. okay, <laughs> don't count on them. No, okay. so the answer is no. <laughs> Drop the service desk stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So sorry, sorry, John, for for cutting John you off. What's up? Hey, is it, so. <clears throat> maybe tying back to some of the previous conversation, but also taking a step back towards towards other things. Um, I wonder if there's a like a an intent of the supply chain that's conveyed at all in in the document in terms of like there's a lot of uh, perspective, I think, from people building uh, upstream open source components resulting in an artifact that's distributed to someone to consume elsewhere. And that's like the beginning to the end of a supply chain versus uh, a large enterprise that is producing a whole bunch of artifacts internally. And maybe like that would lead to an opinion about whether or not to use a centralized metadata store versus attaching artifacts you know, individually to uh, to a registry or something like that. So there's like there's an intent behind the transportability versus the centralization that may be different depending on your purpose. and. I don't know if uh, if that's worth getting into like super complicated and there's a lot there so yeah so um i don't know about anybody else uh and i apologize but it, it so i work purely for an enterprise that doesn't actually like outside of um you know web applications for use like we don't actually distribute software we don't do any of that sort of stuff 
And so um, for us, we definitely do have that perspective. Um, I think we we want to keep some of this, you know, generic. And from our perspective, I think, you know, I don't want to go too deep in this conversation, but you know, for us, a lot of it's just about who do we trust more than necessarily like the more transparency we can get, obviously the better. We would love to be able to say, you know, every vendor gives us their S bomb. So if we ever need to go back and say, oh, this vendor tool is now has this vulnerability in it. We know it has a vendor vulnerability in it and so on and so forth. That's important to us. But if they were, you know, but we are also potentially okay with stuff like, hey, they signed it with their key. We trust them. They're up big vendor, or they're a vendor and they have had their process audited, right? Such that we, and we trust the auditor um, that has done that certification process. So um, yeah, so that's kind of my my quick perspective. There's obviously a lot more there. Um, I, if, if folks think that's valuable in the document, I can definitely um, add that. Makes sense. Hey, on the thread model discussion, we wanted to salsify this, put some sauce on it. Do we want to thread model it if we're putting salsa levels on it and keep it at that? Even if we do like a super rapid thread model, what for? Yeah, I think we can just have the basic this fun fundamental discussions, right? Whenever we are proposing some security control or some best practices, you can just refer it to maybe salsa model or just refer them to what are the possible scenarios, attack scenarios. Uh, we probably don't want to get into the actual, actual this is this will be preventing let's say solar wind it would have, uh, instead of getting into that, you can just be abstract that it will prevent in any malicious intrusion into your field pipelines and stuff like that. What do others think? I agree with you. Are we go for it? Are we like recommending a specific salsa level that we want to achieve, or like in our like if like for like the tutorial or the sample code that will be at the end? Are we like aiming to get to a specific salsa level with that? I kind of I'm not I'm not really sure like where salsa how like it specifically comes in. I think yeah. we want to recommend salsa level four across the board, but I don't <laughs> think you can quite get there today. Uh, yeah, even with really a lot of what we're recommending, if if you're not putting like Spire in a different trust domain for your signing and provenance, all of it is still salsa level two. Yeah. So on, on that front, at least from my my perspective, I think the thing is is we're trying to say, assuming you're following the architecture. Right, and you're following the rules as outlined in the architecture, you should be able to achieve your artifacts should be able to achieve salsa level X. That, like, you know, so it goes through this process. And, you know, given that we are saying you should, you know, you must do these things to follow the architecture, then your, your artifact should be this salsa level. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, I definitely think it's reasonable for us to at least say like, oh, like you should, you can achieve salsa too. Like, I do think that's like, that's a very reasonable level. I don't really know of any real world examples that are at three or four right now. Um, that's just me. Maybe I'm missing something. Yeah. Well, I, I'm familiar with a, a few at a, in a previous life that had gone that sort of, um, direction but it was always for like something super specific it was like a very minor set of like hey this is our crown jewels our core library for all this additional functionality you know we had multiple party security review multiple party code review multiple party you know we were uh do enforcing that the it was reproducible and the whole nine yards but i i don't think we would uh um yeah Alex, you have a great question. You want to say it out loud? What do you think about it? I can find my mute button. Um, yeah, I I mean, so I, I agree that I think we should have some sort of like, I, I think 
particularly right now, salsa is getting a lot of traction out in the, out in the community. A lot of people are looking at it. Um, I think it makes sense for us to say, you know, this is something that everybody is, is, or not, not everybody, but a lot of people are becoming familiar with. We think that if you do this, you achieve level X. So I guess my question is what level do we think we are achieving in this architecture? Is it, is it two? Is it three? Is it, I don't think we're all the way to four, but like, where do we think we land? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to suggest rather than spending time time to thread modeling and like achieving well, well, what is it that we're th even thread modeling for is saying, well, let's try to map this to salsa levels, because I don't think we know. We presume at best we could do two. Possibly we should strive to do four, say, hey, this is the first incarnation or the first iteration of, of this. We're going to keep on building on it. Or here's the here's the crawl walk run. Uh, here's the crawl stage of the software factory. I don't know. What do you all think? Yeah, um, makes sense to me. And I think based on uh, what we've shown, and and in fact, actually, since a lot of um, the stuff from uh, looking at stuff like Tecton and chains and just that general approach of the problem, I think we're a little bit past two assuming we're doing all the right things. Cause if you literally just go to the site, it's, we have provenance available. Yes. Either it would be stored in some database or stored in OCI or whatever it's authenticated, right? We are signing it. Um, and, uh, you know, we're generating, you know, all of this sort of stuff is generated by an actual build service, right? Because we are saying you need to use a CI CD service. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a couple of other things in there. Um, but I'm not going to go too deep into them, but there's a couple other things in there and that's all of salsa two. And then salsa three is some additional things that I think we're also adding in there. What was the bit on serverless? Just scrolling here through the first 10 minutes. So it doesn't really uh, are directly related to this. It was just, I was mentioning that uh, I was re reading this uh, CSA uh, recently published a uh, white paper around serverless security. And there they have basically talk, uh, talk about this thing. Like whenever they propose something, they are telling this would help you, uh, how, how that uh, would help you achieve some of the compliance and regulatory requirement and threat modeling and everything. So I was just referring, we should have the similar uh, modeling here. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really uh, relate to serverless directly. It was just is there is there any any world where like well your metadata store is like serverless Aurora, like Tecton <laughs> runs in serverless mode that things would go to salsa for as a result? Not right now. I don't think we are at the maturity level in the whole industry. But but I mean if if you say conceptually we're using like ephemeral functions as our builders or executors or, or signatories. Like, does that improve matters in, in any way? And maybe that's a question for Matt or Priya of like any, any serverless tecton thing would like actually tip the scale towards like Salsa 3 from Salsa 2 or not really. Um, at least for Tecton, like I think part of a big part of getting to Salsa 3 is like the Spire integration, because um, that would allow for the non falsifiable provenance, which is a requirement of Salsa 3. Um, I'm working on like a proposal for it, but it probably will take a while to get in there. It definitely involves making changes to a couple of different tools. To your question, yeah. though, I don't think the serverlessness of the platform necessarily helps. You can have a super insecure serverless platform or a super secure server full platform, and they're they're sort of separate dimensions. True. Yeah, that sounds spot on. So you could be using like GitHub Actions, presumably is serverless, right? What is what is serverless? But yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> I see Matt nodding. Matt, what do you think? The serverlessness of like ephemeral builders. I was just nodding that I 
I would characterize GitHub Actions as serverless. Well, okay. if Matt says it's serverless, then it is, because he holds the definition. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of responsibility there, Jason. What if what if your like your metadata store is like a serverless Aurora or something like that? Does does that like improve the posture at all? Or I uh, think it can, but I don't think it doesn't necessarily, right? I yeah, I mean I, I it's a level of abstraction question, right? So I mean to some extent it, it just means that the vendor who's providing you that abstraction is in your chain of trust, right? So mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, yeah. you probably have to trust Amazon or Google or whoever you're, you know, buying some of that stuff from anyways, but you, you know, you're also trusting more of those product teams and blah, 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 security of those products. Um, but, um, but I, I think, think in that scenario, you only get the level that the provider can certify to, right? Um, if AWS says they are Salsa level three, then you're Salsa level three. You are kind of um, inheriting that level of assurance from the provider. Yeah. Man. You want some guarantees, right? Or want to be able to yeah. test that, right? Agreed, agreed. Yeah, I'm only so playing should that we with that. Should I'm, be I'm playing that as advocate because I heard from Brandon of like, let's include the serverless stuff, but I'm trying to cut down scope rather than increase the scope. Michael, I'll, okay. I'll defer to you. Like if anyone wants to give it a spin of like, oh, this this things could be like serverless platforms, like don't don't think that because it's serverless, it's any more secure if it's like an insecure serverless offering, right? Yeah, and, and I think what both uh, Brendan Mitchell and, and Jason are talking about in, in the, the chat here. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, it's, I think the big thing is, is, is ephemeral seems to be an important um, piece here, right? It's it's the fact that we're, you know, ostensibly starting from like a clean slate each time we're, we're doing that, um, which I think is, is the more important thing. And I think actually the ephemeral piece is the piece that's in salsa for salsa level three right so like they define the ephemeral environment as the build service ensured that the build steps ran in an ephemeral ephemeral environment such as a container or vm provisioned solely for this build and not reused from a prior build right um that that to me seems like a reasonable goal and is also one of the things that's also already included in the white paper um for the best practices and i think it's also like we might not explicitly call it out if we don't like we we sh maybe should explicitly call it out in the architecture but it like we do essentially say hey your builds should be if we don't uh, we definitely should should make sure that it's clear that you should make sure that any builds that you run like any whatever it is a container a vm whatever it should only run a single build ever it's, it's, all, it's also more on the lines of the traditional Jenkins model where you have these long-lived agents that are just there versus the short-lived ad hoc agents that are provisioned. That's the key differentiation. Okay. Uh, See, just thinking out loud, right? I mean, the Tecton pipeline is a kind of serverless, right? Our task execute when and they are ephemeral. They execute the finish and uh, they don't basically, they are not long-lived. So, I mean, J Jason had a point about, um, or well, he was plus wanting a point I, I see in chat about serverless not necessarily meaning ephemeral, right? So, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different sort of uh, categories of that, right? So I, I just want to make sure we, we're using the term to mean what, what we, uh, kind of same definition of, uh, you know, uh, that thing, right? So, you know, if I'm running, say, a serverless function, right, even with concurrent, maybe I have concurrency control. So each sort of instance is only receiving a single request at a time, right? Like in a, an abstraction like Lambda or Cloud Run or App Engine or whatever, right? Um, the same instance will be reused re from one request to a subsequent request, right? So that's um, one potential, you know, uh, characterization of it, right? Which 
Um, I think what Michael was saying was we probably don't want that, right? Because you can potentially have leftover dirty state from build to build. Right? Okay. Uh, it, it would have to do untrusted multi-tenancy really well, which doesn't really exist yet. Well, it's, yeah. I mean, it's a different kind of multi-tenancy, right? It's sort of requests. It's, it's multi -tenancy, multiple right? single tenancy. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it took us down this path because just being devil's advocate, whether like we really want to speak to it, uh, but we should be clear in the characterization of like, well, when we say this, it confers you this, and, like, right. Think of so, so what things like Tecton and uh, you know some some other things are doing uh, are, um, you know. Uh, Tecton, right? Like you can see it spin up a pod, then the pod goes away. So, you know, it's not reusing that. It is reusing host machines. Uh, so, you know, it, the, again, it sort of depends on sort of what the, you know, abstraction is that's being surfaced and sort of how you want to dissect some of that. But, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I would think of uh, something like the Tecton API as presenting a sort of serverless build abstraction to folks, right? But, you know, it, if you, as with any serverless abstraction, if you peel behind it, right, there are things below it that involve servers and blah, blah, blah. And, well, and then those will get reused. And, and is, so. is the thread surface of that any smaller if it weren't a serverless like API? Or like, a serverless abstraction of any form. Well, so it's like it depends on what the ser how the serverless is implemented. You know, it just needs to the the goal is a fully ephemeral environment. So it's like container based serverless. It, it no one really does that right now. Uh, like some I, people I do understand. It I'm asking yeah, like yeah. the attack surface of Tecton. Specifically. Uh, okay. So I think that there's like actually maybe uh, you know another question here, which is just, um, I if I was attacking this, um, I'd probably attack it at the Kubernetes level, right? Because the the idea here is if I somehow have access in Tecton to mess with something, that probably means I also have access to the actual Kubernetes resources in a given build, and I can go in you know, take the persistent volume and start mucking with it and doing what, you know, whatever I, I, I want with it in, in ways that perhaps Tecton wouldn't be able to see. I don't know. But like, that's kind of where, you know, and I think I, that we just need to be clear that like, look, all of these things um, involve us. Uh, you need to place some level of trust in each of these pieces. Um, and so as an example, right, I think the thing that we just need to call out is because we are calling this out as cloud native, you need to make sure you harden your Kubernetes such that you can run these things in a secure way. I think that's, you know. And, and don't put all the eggs in one basket. Do like a large number of small clusters rather than one massive Kubernetes oh, cluster for, for it all. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, a quick additional sort of recommendation we can make without going into too much detail is we can say we assume this secure software factory is not running alongside your production uh, workloads, like in a production workload, um, you know, uh, thing like, you know, as in production and user workloads, I should say. Okay, sounds like we have a position. Uh, Shripat, sorry, I see your hand raised, but I before we go off, I, I wanna try to agree who's on the hook for what from this point forward. Uh, who's gonna be doing what over the next week? Alex and Michael, how's, how's the progress you guys made? Well, is there any progress in the stuff uh, you guys are gonna start prototyping? Alex, you shared your doc. Did you get any feedback on it? Yeah, I didn't, uh, I've been really uh, busy past few days, luckily uh, with a combination of both um, internal stuff uh, for better or worse, the, the demo that I showed off was, was uh, taken very uh, well both externally and internally. And so um, I got stuck doing some of that. And then there were some other um, external things I had to take care of. What do you uh, need but, help with? So I, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, I think uh, at this point, um, I just need to sit down with Alex 
for an hour and then I will know what I need to, what I will need to help with. But I am available rest of, rest of actually, I will double check and I will uh, sync up with Alex. Are there any folks who wanna do work but don't quite feel where to jump in or how to contribute? Or everyone feels like we understand where they're at, Jason? I think, I think I promised you last week an edit to the reference architecture doc and I still don't have a uh, comment or suggest or edit capabilities on it. I don't know if I need to join a, join a list oh, or something. Uh, I'm not the doc owner. Uh, I believe Michael is the doc owner. Yeah, I can. Right. Yeah, no, no, I can okay. give you that. I think right now, let me just double check. Sorry, yeah, I forgot about this IOU until this week, but. Well, sorry, we, we dropped the ball on our end. Miscommunication. You can both drop the ball. We both dropped yeah. the ball. <laughs> How soon do you think you'd be able to to get the stuff in? It's going to take you closer. I have time. I have it in a note. I just need to copy it into the doc. <laughs> so Amazing. two three second stops. Cool. I'm just going to go one by one uh, to the right as I see you in my gallery view, Priya. C'est la vie. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I busy with internal stuff this week too so I haven't done too much but I'm happy to like give another look at the doc so that it's like looking clean for KubeCon um I can definitely help with yeah. any like demo stuff once Michael and Alex talk maybe if you guys need help definitely feel free to reach out yeah well I, I presume next week is only going to be busier for anyone so we're at a point that we feel like hey we're all gassed out we're not going to be able to do extra at this point let's let's call it so and try to polish and trim and make it presentable rather than add extra stuff john shell sorry uh kid home from daycare with uh COVID quarantine so i'm i'm pretty much uh busy <laughs> dealing with okay. that and vmworld and kubecon and Okay, uh, Matt Moore. Uh, the next two weeks are chaos for me. Yeah, figured. A anything you'd like to see here uh, that you don't quite see it or you feel like this thing is in a good good place? Make it a draft. I can for do another pass over it, um, but um, yeah. Okay, Jake. Howdy. Um, ha hey, uh, this is my first time calling in, so I, I am continuing to do uh, just working on Cosine. Uh, that'll be my contribution oh, to right Salsa Girl. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, and if you can give, give the whole thing a once over end to end, uh, we'd like to start off with feedback and commentary from folks who've been participated at least once in the group before we, we put it out to the outside world. Axel, you're you're the powerhouse of this group, man. Like you silently knock in things throughout the week while we're all like busy off on other things. How are you doing? We can't hear you, man. Still something with your audio setup. Eventually it'll be here. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Did you pull the Amazing. plug on that mic? Yeah, no, I've got a weird, my microphone since my last update now is a three-state thing. It's off, off and on instead of off and on, which is a bit confusing. Um, yeah, tomorrow's Friday, uh, no meeting. So I'm hoping to have another read through the document and try and sort of find little places to provide input or, you know, add in stuff if it's missing. Um, happy to be, I know, Michael, you were talking about, you know, getting together with other people to uh, to discuss. I'm happy to, be, to try and be part of that conversation and sort of hopefully provide helpful input. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Cool. Right on. Brandon, you've, you've also helped shape this, this thing quite a bit. Carve yeah, it how I did. we want it to look like. I did, uh, once through and a couple tweaks in there, I think between now and next week is probably busy for me, but if there's anything specific, feel free to shout out. Okay. Aditya. I think the doc, uh, I, I'm happy to help out if there are any particular sections that need work, but I don't have any on the big picture stuff right now. I, I could barely hear you. There was a lot of 
other noise. Could you repeat what he said, please? Oh, sure. Uh, is it better now? Or Yeah, sounds like you're moving something on the desk. That's odd. Uh, sitting the, yeah. Go, go I, I'll just put it in the chat. Okay. Aradna? Um, yeah, I, I have some bandwidth and I can probably review the document and add some comments. Or um, if, if I see anything missing, I can make notes make and sense. start working on that. Yeah. 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 Uh, make, make suggestions directly, or particularly at this point, if it's, if it's like around polish, making things that are, things are crisp. Uh, sure. Go for it. Sounds good. Yeah. Marina, how are you? I'm good. Yeah. I'm awesome. great. <laughs> but yeah, um, as far as the document, I'm happy to take a look at any particular sections that um, folks need more review or especially anything that um, there's a couple of sections I've been meaning to take a look at, but if there's anything else, just let me know. Um, yeah, I have a tiny bit of time this week, but probably not time to review the whole thing. So, cool. yeah. Okay. So as, as folks are reviewing, if you see something that needs attention, but you can't, can't quite jump in, uh, tag Marina to give her a little bit more of like focused areas. Uh, Shrupat. Yeah, uh, I have signed up for this admission controller section. Uh, so maybe I'll spend some time uh, next few days to basically wrap that up. Flash that out. Okay, amazing, Shripat. Thank you. Andrew Block. Uh, next two weeks are crazy, like everyone else. So I, if there are any areas I could help with, just tag me and I'm happy to look at it. I'm going to go through the doc again this weekend, just as an over. Okay, cool. And on myself, uh, diagrams are on me. I've been slacking on that, and we punted to CNCF, but looks like they're not going to come through. So I'll get on that. Uh, feel free to like annoy me with it. Like ask me, like, dude, remember what you said during the meeting? Where's that? It's been one hour. <laughs> Have you made any progress? Ask me in an hour where it's at. I'm joking. Oh, I'm on top of it. I'll get it done put it in um yeah let's set anything else anyone wants to discuss michael wrap us up cool no, no i think uh, just if anybody needs me i'm actually i i have now officially uh freed up so so i'm, I'm available at least until uh kubecon Uh, is there time right now to kick back and do that, like Michael, Alex, Axel review of the prototype, and anyone yep. else? Yep. Uh, so as I said, yeah, oh. I my literal uh, calendar frees up at one thirty p.m. Yeah. Eastern to not time well, today. I don't know if Axel or Alex have time to do it right now either. Like, I'm sorry, but we can we can find another time if time. I, uh, I have another thing at twelve thirty, but then I'm free anytime after one Eastern. Um, so. I'm good. No. I'm good with Michael's 1.30 and on. I'm trying to convert in my head into English time. So I think 1.12.30 is 5.30 here, I think. Uh, 1.30 is 6.30. Uh, yeah, I could be available at 6.30. Um, I can't be available in the next half hour. I need to get this cat home. <laughs> but um, yeah, otherwise, I'll yeah, just ping me on the chat, Michael, on, on Slack, and I'll try and enjoy whatever, whatever you're doing. Cool. Right on. Thanks, everyone.